We shall pump the wagons once more. We are a decent chunk of the way through conquering the Wood Elves. I honestly think we can finish them off entirely within 10 turns. I'm pretty confident on that. Now, for the short victory, we do have 21 out of 30 settlements. I'm probably going to go for like 40 settlements total in this campaign. I want to go a decent bit beyond the short victory, but not too much. Down here, though, we are encircling this, and really, we should probably attack this now. Actually, never mind. I forgot we don't have any siege attackers. The pump wagons are not siege attackers, which they very much are not. I would actually argue they are the furthest thing away from siege attackers in the entire game because they are the worst unit at breaking down gates in more or less the entire game. They're the worst unit that I'm aware of at breaking down gates. Okay, I think we start off with this. Can we get through the gate? Oh, we actually kind of are. They're slowly squeezing through there. Oh, 5,000 damage. Oh, he's getting even more. Oh, fuck. 6,000 damage from those iron breakers just using their ranged weapons. That is extremely painful. Even less damage than I thought we'd take there. And then you are going to go over here. That's not great. Uh, if they weren't right there, that would be fine. They are right here, though. All right, Luan and Franz are both there. Why do you go after the small settlement there? Oh my god, your army is disgusting. That is the worst army I've ever... Mm, no, they have Grail Knights. The Grail Knights, Knights of the Realm, those are threats. All right, everything else in this army, not a fucking problem at all. Now we just move back out here. If I could wipe out both Franz and Luan in quick succession, that would be incredible for me. Oh, Franz has a very mediocre army. Then I can probably send this guy down here, but I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to fight this and see how much damage I take. And if I don't take too much damage, then I will move that other army away. If I do take a good amount of damage, then I can just move that army up next to him and he'll have protection against uh, Reikland. Moving your armies to the right places in the right order is like the most important thing when it comes to the campaign. <laughs> Battles do matter, but battles can be like twice as hard or half as hard, depending on the way you're actually moving your armies. They're sending up those fucking uh, skirmish cavalry. They just always do that now. Nope, they're not going to run away. They're just going to fight them. Oh, yep. <laughs> Pegasus Knights are coming up again. A little bit of a groundhog day here. They're sending all of their fucking uh, cavalry up way ahead of their army once more. We'll just use that there. Okay, these Knights of the Realm are gone. That's great. Oh, those Pegasus Knights are gone. The Grail Knights are gone. Yeah. Uh, we're just so effective when we're in like 4v1, 5v1 situations. It doesn't matter if they're uh, anti-large cavalry. We still destroy them. In large enough numbers, pump wagons can kill anything. And the, the peasants are just so weak. They're just so bad. We just absolutely obliterate them here. The balance of power is not that strongly in my favor, but I think it should be. <laughs> I think it's kind of... Kind of lying to me here. There we go. Yep. <laughs> yep. I was like, wow, the balance of power is like only two thirds in our favor, but then we immediately get the army losses. That makes sense. And you can just go on down here. Okay, Franz is attacking. Or wait, no, he went around us to go to the settlement. Oh, shit. Okay, they have that guy coming in. At least we don't get wiped out if we lose this. Fuck, I didn't know they had another army that could get here. Actually, do we win this? What the fuck? This army's garbage. The swordsmen will do nothing to the pump wagons. The hand gunners, they could do a lot, but we won't let them. The pistolers actually might be a good bit of a problem. It depends how they play with them. They probably won't play very well with them. The archers, nothing. They're going to do nothing. I'm seeing so many ways that we can trade so well here, especially with a nice wall that these guys will help us get by dying very quickly. Yeah, I think we honestly win this. It's going to be fucking close. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, why did I fight it with large armies? Why did I fight it with large armies? Oh, fuck. That is such a grievous mistake to make. I honestly think we still stand some chance, though. We do have better reinforcement time. We can wipe these guys out. That'll probably trigger them to charge us. But fuck, that's still so bad for us. That's still so much worse for us than the alternative. Oh, they're splitting up their army so nicely for me. They just have archers just sitting there for no reason. I don't know why they're doing that. They have hand gunners sitting there for no reason. I don't know why they're doing that. They have even more hand gunners just sitting over there as well. They've chosen the brilliant strategy of just leave their ranged units completely undefended in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> All right, if you guys could get into combat with friends, that's great. Oh, friends, once again, doesn't have regen. Grom does, and they've taken equal damage so far. So that means that it's very strongly in Grom's favor. We move back here for sure. And then potentially, I think we all just move over here. I think our whole shit just moves over there. Except for you guys who are going to get charged in the rear. Uh, oh, we don't have Grom's wall. We don't have Grom's wall. Oh, that turns it against us too. Because Grom's wall, the healing from that is so important for us. Fuck. We're running out of health. We're running out of models. Okay, we charge in there. We charge in there hard. I, I don't think we have the strength for this at this point. We're, we can actually kill friends, though, I think. 
but I don't think we necessarily win this battle overall. Uh, my micro is at its limits. Franz is dead. Franz is dead. He only controlled the first army. The first army is the only one that gets the leadership debuff, actually. I didn't really consider that until this moment. That's very unfortunate. Losing this battle is going to hurt. And actually, what we do is we, we salvage everything we can here. It was at exactly this moment that I remembered I got that fucking dog in me, and so does Grob. Towards the beginning of this campaign, I managed to beat entire armies using only Grom and one unit of pump wagons. And in this situation, I'm against one army, and I have a total of approximately three units of full pump wagons remaining. Now as you can see, the balance of power, it is complete dog shit. It is about as bad as it could be without us getting the army losses. But through some absurd determination, and a good 25 minutes of non-stop cycle charging, we managed to barely, and I mean fucking barely, squeak out an extraordinarily Pyrrhic victory. Alright, we get those bonuses. Those are big buffs. Please break them quick. Yes, yes, yes. We have like 50 melee attack plus charge bonus. We're hitting every attack. Oh, is that it? That's it. That's it. I knew that would be it. Yes. Oh my god. Oh, that is so ridiculous, but we fucking got it. I mean, obviously Grom, in and of himself got a fair bit of value, but some of these pump wagons got like over 2,000 gold value too. We lost two units. Ah, that's sad. That's a real shame, but they lost a few more than two units. They lost most of their armies there. Add time. Ouch. I've just been blasted into an alternate dimension to give you this warning. Don't shave your balls unless you're using the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. Without its cutting-edge ceramic blade and advanced skin-safe technology, one wrong move and you'll end up as I did a few years ago. In absolute agony, googling can my testicles fall out of the sack if I cut it badly enough. The cut wasn't actually that bad, but I did Google that. My god, is it painful when you cut your balls. The safety of your testicles isn't all Manscaped has to offer, though. Their Performance Package 4.0 includes the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Hair Trimmer, the Weed Whacker 2.0 Era Nose Hair Trimmer, and both the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver to keep your balls fresh year-round. And right now, you can also get a pair of anti-chafing Manscaped boxers and the Shed Travel Bag for free with the Performance Package 4.0. You can use my code all caps brilliant for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Well, now that your balls are safe, I guess it's time to head back to my dimension. Don't forget to drink water. Peace. Also, don't forget to use code brilliant to get 20% off at manscaped.com. Thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Fuck it. Grom's going non-stop, baby. Yeah, we fucking do this as well. This is not going to be an easy one, but I think we're already doing pretty well, honestly. Please give me the wall. Please give me the wall. I need the wall right now. There we go, there we go. Oh, that saves a lot of our units. We kind of brute forced this, but they only have one gate, so we didn't have much of a choice. Actually, we loot and occupy that for sure. Nice. Started building up another army here, just to go after these guys, make sure they don't get too much ground on me. Grom the Paunch, I'm thinking, is going to go for Uber's Reich, because that is a 10,000 gold sack, and I think we can take it afterwards. Down here, this guy's just slowly dealing with the dwarves still. I mean, taking free settlements, I might sell them to another faction eventually. I don't know, we'll see. But I don't think Beligar is going to recover enough to really pose a threat to me. I just don't want to go too far over here, because Karazakarak could be a problem. They're not much of a fan there. That is minus 599 relations. Grom is going to turn the Uber's Reich 5 into the Uber's Reich 0. I really like that they have the Uber's Reich 5 in the settlement. It's a nice, like, vague recreation of them, but I think they should make it a little more realistic by causing Carillion to do friendly fire with 70% of her shots. And they are done. Very nice. Now these guys can pretty clearly just go back in here and finish the Wood Elves off. Uh, their settlements are going to be worth quite a bit soon again. Here, this should be fairly easy to wipe out this army, even if it's high tier, I'm confident. Yeah, that's actually not a bad army. Those two units of Unbreakable Greatswords are going to do a lot of damage to us. We're going to go in immediately because they are tired to begin with. Oh, and we'll have a really nice fishy breath here in a second. Let's actually see. Yeah, like 500 plus value off of that alone. We pop that 40% resistance. Uh, and then over here on this right side, we're going to crumble them pretty much instantly. Okay, Sigmar's Sons, four models left. The Greatswords, ten. They're gone. They're gone. And this is why you don't force march into a settlement right next to another army that is much stronger than you. <laughs> Once again, we can just bunny hop and destroy another army, actually two armies this time, and take a settlement. We have no reason not to do that. We can just keep these guys weak permanently as long as they keep having their armies in settlements very easy to wipe out near Grom. And actually, first, because I'm so very confident here, I will go for Grom's mission, finally. Even though we have only 18 units in Grom's army, 
I'm still just so extremely confident. Definitely going to be using the Banner of Eternal Flame, and I'm going to remember what units this is on. I'm going to put it onto the Spiky Rollers, because these guys are quite weak to fire damage, and we get fire damage from this, which is just great. Over 20% more damage against the trolls, so should trade very well against them given that. And also, their leadership is below 60 baseline. Ours with Grom, 90 fucking 1. So, <laughs> quite good, considering that we're on very hard campaign and battle difficulty. Quite an interesting name. I wonder what exactly that git is guzzling. <laughs> so, we could go back here and deal with these guys, but we're fast enough that we don't need to. We're just gonna charge that main army. As per usual, the skirmish cavalry have decided to die. Come on, get in there. You gotta keep that uh, flaming attack on them. There we go. They should deal with the trolls pretty well with that. Wow, that Arachnarch Spider is taking a lot of damage. I did not think the Pump Wagons would do well against it, but I guess because it's such a large hitbox and they have such high AP. There we go. They're finally gone. Unless they have some Unbreakable Unit, which they don't. Ooh, we just got the Eagle Talons. There's a very nice secret recipe called the Elven Foy Gras, which you make by combining some spores and shrooms with some beast bits, and the Eagle Talons is a third ingredient. 50 unit experience gain per turn, all armies, and minus 2 global recruitment duration, and plus 4 recruit rank, all armies, faction wide. That is very, very nice. That is a lot of ingredients, but my god, is this going to be very good for us. And yeah, we can go for Beligar here. There are some Slayers in here, but I mean, we just outnumber them by so much. We can surround them and wipe them out. Okay, 2 minutes, 22 seconds reinforcement time. That reinforcement location is very unfortunate because that means we don't really have the wall camp advantage. We're going to wait for them to move up. Hmm, they are playing this about as well as they can. I'm a little impressed. Not very impressed, but a little impressed by the AI here. Charging the giant slayers. Back off a little bit here. Drop that debuff on them. There we go. Down to half health. That's great. Massive damage on those slayers. Should I stay in extended combat there? Probably not, but they can chase me down pretty effectively. They're very fast for dwarves. Now over here, you guys actually are going to be able to charge pretty much all of their ranged units. Okay, you have taken damage way faster than I expected. You've got to pull out, but you did do some decent damage to them. Mm, those giant slayers are down to one model. They don't matter anymore. We're going to just push in here. If we can break this group, then these guys are all freed up. This is unfortunately still losable at this point. I mean, their, their single entities are just so absurdly powerful. Okay, that was more damage than I thought we would take. They did not get the army losses for a long time there, and those ghost heroes, they just stuck around. They were not wanting to die. <laughs> you have two settlements and no balance of power. I don't feel like that defensive alliance. No thanks. Reichland now also has no balance of power, which is very good for us. They're not recruiting right now as well. I feel like going for Ultdorf is the better move in this situation. That is a lot of halberdiers. Enough that this will actually be a little hard. I haven't been able to get a control point victory once in this campaign, so I would like to see if I can get that here. Ooh, those are handgunners. Those are handgunners. Oh, no, 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 thank you. Actually, we dodged them. Holy shit, we dodged them. That's crazy. If I can cap the control points with Grom, I will, because I haven't had a single control point victory so far this campaign. Okay, Grom broke down the gate before they got anywhere near him. Now we just go for the main control point, because they're going to take forever to get back there. We're also going to send the Flappas up here. All of you charge the Reichsguard. You're not going to do amazingly, but you're not going to completely lose against them. Actually, they just stopped. The Reichsguard just stopped right before I charged them. They did not counter charge. All right, that's great. <laughs> We get that in a second, and I don't think they can take it back from us in a reasonable time. Ooh, we might be fucked here. We gotta break- Oh, no. That's bad. That is- That is a hammer and anvil, except for the anvil is coming in after the hammer. Because the hammer is also very difficult to kill. Fuck. As soon as we take this, I might send Grom to help them. I think I do that, because they're gonna get hurt there. Oh, man. I really thought the Reichsguard would keep going down quickly, but as soon as we lost our uh, charge bonus, their melee defense is like 15 higher than our melee attack with all the buffs they have right now, so... The Great One's here. That's great. We use all these other abilities. The Reichsguard should now go down very quickly because our melee attack is much higher. I played that poorly, but they should be able to get off the battlefield here. They do have a good amount of mass, a good amount of momentum. Oh, God. There's two units that have just been going at that gate for so long. They're doing nothing. Oh, actually, we just won by the control points. I guess giving the AI just three free units of flappers to easily kill was actually an effective strategy there, even though it was definitely not intentional. <laughs> We're just going to claim this once again. Crushing the feet, really. My god. Oh, they do have Luan. That's why. They have Luan. Oh, shit. I still think that we win this simply because we crush his entire army very quickly. Great. Skirmish Cav gone. The AI is literally the worst they've ever been at using Skirmish Cav. 
I don't love the way they're playing this because they're playing this fairly well. I think we just hard charge that right side. And then we'll see what we can do with the left side here. I think we actually just charge their center here. If we just stop those peasant bowmen from firing, their melee units are going to do absolutely nothing against us. All right, do not stop just because Luan is attacking you. That is no excuse to stop moving. All right, very effective so far. 10 out of 10 so far. I don't think we could be doing much better than we are. The question is, will Luan route? That is the only question in my mind here. He's actually taking damage. He's actually taking damage. He has such a big hitbox. That might be why. Oh, yeah. It's because so many of them are hitting him. It's like 12, 14 maybe units of pump wagons that are all hitting him at once. Okay, and they got the army losses. That's great. That's awesome. He's such a strong fighter, but he just keeps playing so fucking poorly. Not even too much damage. That is actually incredible. Uh, I do want to ideally send over an army to deal with the high elves here. I think Snorko might be that guy. I think he might have that dog in him. Or rather that wheel in him. That pump in him? That wagon in him? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he has the combination of things inside of him that will allow him to win, hopefully. <laughs> Humphrey Hammerheim. That is a powerful name. <laughs> okay, can I reach any major armies? Yes, I can. You get wiped out. Uh, that is a good army. It's actually going to be very good for me to wipe that out now. A lot of great swords, a lot of halberdiers. Not much else of value, though. The huntsmen are good. The huntsmen are actually good in this matchup, too. I don't want to fight them into trees. I want to fight the right side of them. The one thing to remember here is that, like, we're this ridiculously strong without even having a caster in our army. <laughs> Grom would be so much stronger with, like, a really good uh, spellcaster here. And he's already just way too fucking strong. Great, great damage on this right side. They're just done. We're just too strong, man. We're just too fucking strong. Ah, uh, yes, that seems like a very good decision for you to make, more her. We are going to sack and then occupy this. Oh, God, come on. <laughs> come on, auto-resolve. Some damage, but nothing that we can't deal with. Hopefully they'll actually stand and fight. If they do, that's great. Oh, if they have a bad reinforcement location, that's even better. Oh, they're not going to do that. Okay. I have fought on this map no less than 15 times, potentially 20. Oh, that was just friendly fire, you motherfucker. Oh, God. I thought that was a good angle. There we go. We took a lot of damage. I just played that maximum speed. Oh, my God. I'm so done with the fucking wood elves. Finally, these guys are freed up. Oh, awesome. For a small settlement, that is a lot of value. That is 15,000 goddamn value. Gonna loot and occupy because I don't think I have the movement range. Oh. We can we can just fucking raid them then. Ah, ah, you attacked immediately. That's less annoying. But why do I lose a pump wagon there? And you're dead. All right, fine. Talslin? Tal... Talzian? I, I have no idea how to pronounce that. But they're gone. All right, Orion is permanently dead. Great, awesome. You actually have to take this settlement because you can't move otherwise. But it's worth so much that it's just a good idea regardless. Uh, the Snorko have Lightning Strike. I don't know if Snorko has Lightning Strike. I don't think he does. Yep, you take that back. That's fine. We could absolutely win this. We have some really good trades here. I don't need to keep this settlement. I could take it back pretty quickly, but I just have no reason not to fight this. This will actually be a pretty interesting one, I think. They don't have enough to protect the crossbows, and also our archers will trade so well against those halberdiers. The Empire Knights are going to be tough, but the Orc Biggins should take them. Okay, they split up into two sections too. God damn, they're making my life too easy here. Okay, we block this off to reduce their options. Why not? All the boys are going to charge out immediately. We're going to see if we can get a charge with the Orc Biggins. They have 52 charge bonus right now. The Pistolers are probably going to just decide to die. They usually will do something like that. Yeah, those Empire Knights are great when they're in a good matchup. And this is not a good matchup for them. Uh, they're, they're actually not that great in good matchups even. They're okay in good matchups. Uh, we go after those crossbows. You guys also go after those crossbows. Shoot the Empire Knights there, I think. Actually, no, shoot the Halberdiers. They are decent in melee against infantry. But when they're getting shot... They do not hold up. All right, we're going to go for a flank there. We're also going to go for a flank here if possible. These guys may be lost here, but they will get a lot of value first. Then once those crossbowmen start running, they're gone. Oh, we're going to rebuild the wall behind them so they can't escape. That is diabolical. And we won that. Gotta love when the AI actually decides to attack one of your settlements when they don't have a hundred times the strength that you do. <laughs> can be very fun. Can be very fun as long as they actually attack it and don't just encircle it for fucking four years. Gonna start with Grom taking Null. Did not take too long. Grom can temporarily get up to over 80% physical resistance now, so he's he's a little strong, considering he also has an effective health pool of like 15-ish thousand. Now we have the Nuln Grand Prix. I don't know if this recruit rank is just local or if it's uh, global. That would be really cool if it's global, but I think we're gonna finish this campaign before we actually get that. 
Gonna quickly destroy Gelt, just because we can. Ooh, he does have a steam tank in here, but other than that, this is not a very good army. Ah, they are up the hill. I don't like that. I'll see what I can do to them in terms of casting. Okay, now they're moving up. And now we can fight them on much more advantageous terrain. Why is the steam tank still back there? Okay, the steam tank just doesn't want to be part of the army. That's fine. <laughs> Definitely intentional. Uh, it looks like the sides have most of their valuable units. I want to get on the archers in the center, though. And Gelt is also in the middle. If we can get on him, that's great, because he will get a good amount of value. He'll probably also get a good amount of friendly fire. Uh, just beeline to our fucking pump wagon there. The one pump wagon in the crowd of swordsmen, and we hit it. Uh, we're going to toss this in the middle, because we are just the most surrounded there. Uh, they should go down quickly. Here, they're going down quickly. Their leadership is actually way worse than I thought it would be. Uh, I will try and not do friendly fire here. I'm, I'm doing my best. I completely missed this at the time, but my second spell cast... Well, it just kind of obliterated this guy. He survived it, but it hit him head on. I am genuinely incapable of not doing friendly fire with Vindictive Glare. The pump wagons, to be fair though, are pretty easy to do friendly fire on by accident. And the vast majority of their army's already routed. The one flagellant remaining. You're really gonna win this one, buddy. You're really gonna get it. Oh, get back up. You got this. You got this, buddy. Yep, you got this. Go for it. And I think he's dead. <laughs> He nearly got it. He nearly got it. He nearly wiped out my whole army there. Uh, oh, the steam tank. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about the fucking steam tank. Oh, uh, because it never moved up. Okay. <laughs> I was like, why? Why is the balance of power not like completely in my favor? We already got the army losses on them. Uh, that would be it. Please die. All right, you're dead. I think we just kind of move up and raid here because I don't see any other armies. If they had any more armies here, they probably wouldn't even bother sending them because we're not that much stronger than them. If they move up and attack us, we then take this next turn. It will not be hard. If they don't, then this could be a little bit of a problem. So naturally, they did not attack us. That would have been far too convenient. There are multiple layers to the pain that I experienced in the following section. So... It begins with a bad decision. What I do is I attack the army outside the settlement with both of my armies. Not the worst decision in the world, not too bad, but if I did it last turn, they would have been in Force March and it would have been their larger army, so that would have been better. And also, I could have encircled the settlement, then isolated the army outside of the settlement and fought it on its own, then fought the settlement. Both of those would have been better, so I, I admit that, I'm aware of that, that decision was definitely bad, but <laughs> for some reason, in this battle, every time... The second army started coming onto the battlefield, which actually did take a while because I fought this using small armies. The game crashed. I played it twice. Both times it crashed at the exact same point. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't think it's my mods. I'm literally just using like lighting mods. Here's my mod list right now. There's nothing in here that I think could possibly cause this. And I've had this bug before, but usually it's resolved by just fighting the battle again. Uh, it was not this time. So what I do instead is I encircle the settlement now, finally, because I don't really have a choice, and I did actually go after the other army, but then the settlement garrison and the army in the settlement sallied it out to attack me, so this is pretty good. It's definitely worse than the other options that I explained earlier that I should have done, but I'm going to show you that battle now. It was a very interesting one. Hmm, I don't love this map, but we are going to be able to go downhill into them. Uh, we are fighting this with small armies, so that should make it a little easier micro-wise. Perfect. They're sending the skirmish cav up to just die as per usual. We're going to wait a second. Ooh, they're sending their cavalry up first. That's great. That, actually, they sent the great eagle first, but those Illyrian reavers, and I think they have some silver helms. Yeah, they do have some silver helms. Those are going to go down without too much of a hitch. Okay, they still have a little bit of skirmish cavalry. God, those archers. Oh, they can shoot so far. We're, we're going to actually just run straight into those archers with these guys. I think we can do that very effectively. We are going to get shot quite a bit in the middle here. Okay, you guys go after the silver helms. Great, great, great. We pull back in the middle. We don't fight those spears yet, and we will get onto those archers in a few seconds here. We're taking a lot of damage while we're charging them because, I mean, they do a fuck ton of damage when they shoot us. Oh, yeah, this is looking nice. They do have some Lothern Sea Guard here. They will be a bit of a problem, but the rest of those archers are gone. Uh, we're actually going to hard charge with these guys. And yeah, they do have spearmen and stuff coming back here. We're going to back off here. Over here, not looking too bad. I wish we could have finished these guys off before those other ones got back in here. We're going to pull back here again and then recharge them. We don't want to just be standing still and getting attacked by spearmen, but if we're charging them hard enough with enough of our units, we can actually deal with them quite effectively. You know what, we're in melee enough right now that I will hit that wall. It's not a perfect one, but I'm ideally not going to have my full army in combat uh, for the rest of this fight. Okay, no, 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 no. 
One of your models is not a reason for all of your models to die. That's very stupid. Please stop doing that. We're going to try and wipe out this section of their army pretty quickly. The balance of power still being in my favor is honestly surprising. My first army is at half health, and their second army is coming onto the battlefield at full health. Although they don't have the full army on yet. We'll see. We'll see once that happens. Yeah, it looks like they're actually going to route very quickly here. No matter how we fight those Phoenix Guard, we are going to take a lot of damage. So I think we may as well just try and sandwich them here. If we could attack them from both sides at once... Shit, those Phoenix Guard. Oh, they're actually not getting that much value. That was a pretty perfect sandwich. You can see they're completely surrounded there. We're gonna go for even more charges here if we can. Uh, this section is taking a lot of damage there. Those weren't the best trades, but I didn't see a way to get better trades right there. Please route. You're not unbreakable. Why do you have 54 fucking leadership right now? Okay, now they're routing. Now we pull back out. Silver and Guard. Ugh. I think we can deal with them, though. I think we can deal with them there. All right, all of you charge those archers. All of you. Yeah, they are holding up pretty well here, but I, we're not going to be able to isolate them more than we have here. Five Phoenix Garden, they're still fighting, my god. They do have more units coming in. Okay, but they're all archers. We can actually just kind of spawn camp them here. Oh, those are Silver Helms, fuck. Alright, we toss this onto them. Uh, we're going to take a lot of damage there. Oh, we need to outnumber Silver Helms. Alright, you guys charge them. Oh, uh, we have four units left to come in. They are not full health, but we do have the majority of the balance of power already, and they are out of units now. There we go. Okay, we gotta chase them down very carefully here. Feels good to actually be able to fight a battle without the game fucking crashing. I'm glad they sallied out, though. If they did not sally out, I genuinely don't know if I could have won that. We get a little replenishment. I don't think anyone else can reach us. Yeah, the High Elves, they cannot reach us. They have a few good armies coming to destroy us. But that's- we don't need to keep this. We're literally just getting this for the short victory. I don't actually want to deal with the Elven Donut again. I've already done that. Oh, we can auto-resolve this. Beautiful. For some reason, I haven't actually gotten the notification, but I have gotten the short victory. I've met both the conditions. Uh, we're just gonna call that. Fuck it. Short victory achieved. It- it says that I've done all the conditions for it, but it also hasn't given me, like, the notification thing. Awesome. Overall, we have done very well this campaign. Honestly, one of the easier campaigns I've done, not gonna lie. The only real difficulty was the lack of auto-resolves, and against some large units, like for example the Tree Kin, uh, they were just deadly. <laughs> we could not trade well against them. The Pump Wagons have pumped all they're going to pump. Thanks for watching, big thanks to my patrons and YouTube members as always, and yeah, the next campaign, I'm thinking it's gonna be tree only. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty certain I'm gonna go for tree only, so that'll be very fun, I'm very excited for that one.